Hi, my name is Jörg, which is German for George, here at Find a Job in Germany in Berlin. Getting interview calls is crucial, people, to land a job, and struggling at getting calls sucks. I get it. Now, in most of the cases, really, that has to do with your CV. Or let me rephrase that a little. In those professional areas in which there are enough jobs out there, I would really go as far as saying that in 99% of all the cases, it will be because of your CV. And that's okay as long as you know what to avoid and how to do things right. So what I'm going to tell you now are the top five of biggest mistakes I've seen over the years when it comes to CV content, CV design, and CV format. Here we go. Mistake number one, a sloppy resume. It's pretty simple. Your job already begins with you handing in a clean and well-structured application. If any company, any recruiter sees that you are not able to deliver clean work, they're just not going to shortlist you because somebody else did it better. It's that easy. So um, what does that mean? No sloppy typos, please. No grammar mistakes, please. No format issues, please. And if you're trying to align paragraphs, something which I see very, very often, you know, you're trying to make them all in one row, please don't use the space bar, use the tap button. That's what that is for, okay? Now, there is a principle behind CV drafting, and that is you can totally go ahead and decide which design you want to create, which rules you want to apply throughout that design, okay? But when you do that, you have to apply your rules all the time, consistently, okay? I want to give you one example. If you're saying you worked for ABC Pharmaceuticals Limited, you put the LTD right, okay? Now, if you're you know, gonna put another company further down below, which also happens to be a limited, which I can easily find out on Google as a recruiter, don't forget the LTD, all right? So you have to apply that rule which you are using throughout. I don't care if you're using the LTD, but if you're doing it, please use it consistently throughout. Another example, when you're using a comma to separate a company from its location, okay, city or country, you need to apply the comma in the same context again, okay? And never forget that when you're using a comma, it's word, comma, space, new word, okay? Not word, space, comma, space, new word. Another example is when you're using a long hyphen uh, to create a bullet point. Make sure it's always the same length. I can totally see that right away. When leaving a paragraph, another example, uh, to create space in between jobs, leave the same space between every job, okay? So when you're using a line spacing of 1.5, don't switch to 1.0 all of a sudden. I can see that right away, okay? You get the picture. Mistake number two, um, now let me put this one short and simple. You must never forget there is a person behind every ad and that person has a problem. Okay, the recruiter, of course. In fact, every organization is, of course, working on solving problems. So their problem will always be your starting point. And you want to show that you are their problem solver, nothing less. Now, how do you prove that in your CV? Well, the mistake here is that you are not providing a clear understanding of your achievements, of your contributions. But instead, you're listing a bunch of spongy statements about yourself. Let me give you one example, which I really like, which I see quite often, which is great communicator creating synergies between stakeholders, okay? Now, this type of language is bullshit at its best, and it doesn't get any more superficial. I'm not learning anything as a recruiter, and that would be a mistake you want to avoid. Instead, um, you have to demonstrate how you helped Others in the past tackle similar problems to give the new company the impression of how you're intending to go about it for them. So in your project description, I need to be able to see your achievements, your contributions, your actions, and your results from your previous work right away. Okay, that's really what it comes down to. Try to think of it really like this. Nobody is interested in knowing what you did on your first job when you have like nine or 10 years of experience. Or let me put it the other way around again. Um, Try to adopt the recruiter's perspective. Never itemize all details of your work history, okay? Instead, I want you to show me how you have contributed and been at the top of your game during previous projects, which are ideally, of course, similar to the ones which I'm currently hiring for. Often it happens 
that recruiters are specifically looking for industry-specific expertise. Let's say it's an e-gaming company. You will have a much better shot, of course, if you had already gathered experience for another e-gaming app or another e-gaming company in the past. That is where you want to put an extra effort into your application based on the things I just mentioned. So only if I'm really learning all these things right away, am I going to take a sincere interest in your profile? That's how it works. Mistake number three, and that is what I keep repeating over and over whenever techies ask us for advice. Uh, you may be good at several things, okay? Say you know Python really well, as well as Golang really well, as well as Ruby really well. Just an example, okay? Well, that's really nice and that's applaudable, but what are you really awesome at? Any recruiter wants to get the security that when they're inviting you for a first round, they won't experience any surprises because they're investing their time. Yeah? So you have to focus and decide on what you're truly good at. And especially so, since those might be three different roles, either you're a Python backend developer, a Golang backend developer, or a Ruby on Rails developer. Those are three sets of JDs. Okay, so again, you have to focus and decide on what you're truly awesome at. And that summary needs to be crisp and clean, like senior backend engineer with a focus on Node.js and AWS. Bam. Okay, and not just JavaScript six years or JavaScript developer. And you can pretty much break it down like this and frame that sweet spot of yours for any role. Okay. Are you a QA engineer or any QA engineer, or are you a cybersecurity specialist with a focus on penetration testing? You know, it's important that you put that in somewhere, somehow. Okay. That's also why in our get to know calls, when you're interested in our coaching program, as a first step, Paul calls you and he'll be asking you a bunch of tech related questions, tech stack related questions. Have you worked on this? Have you done that? Have you experienced with this? Do you have an understanding of that? So that's also how we are. You know, able to get a first better understanding of your skills because often it doesn't derive from the CV that you're sending us right away. Which actually brings me to mistake number four, which is pretending like everything is equally important because everything automatically becomes equally irrelevant. Think about it. Um, please focus on the skills which are important for the role that you're going for, okay? See, for every role, there is a typical set of skills, 10 to 15 skills, which are indispensable. I don't know. Let's stick to the backend engineering example one more time. You need Node.js, CICD knowledge, for example, with Jenkins, um, as well as, of course, Docker, Kubernetes, a naturally cloud experience. Ideally, you've worked on several projects already where you applied technologies that were based on AWS cloud. I actually talk about cloud in another video where I also explain the market a little better so you understand the difference to Azure and GCP. Anyway, the mistake here that you could possibly be doing is that while this would actually be your focus, you also keep on giving me 20 other skills, which you might have or claim to have, but have nothing to do with a typical backend engineering position, okay? So if you're throwing additional languages in especially, it's just going to be confusing for me, which, you know, that danger comes up quite often, especially with Java full stack engineers who have Java Spring Spring Boot in the back, but they have worked on JavaScript with React or Angular in the front. So a JavaScript framework. Uh, to put it another way, what makes you great here are not a hundred different things, but generally two or three. And it actually leads back to what I mentioned before you have to pinpoint your sweet spot first, what you're really awesome at, okay, I mentioned that, and that has to do with your skills. But let me also tell you from experience, it also has to do with your confidence. It also has to do with your passion. It's what you like best. And uh, coming back, more isn't often better, often less is more. And then, of course, I'm going to say it again, I need to see the achievements and results from your CV from your previous jobs right away, which matter for the role that you're going for, which I'm ideally hiring for. Give me proof. Don't give me shallow assertions. Unless you're in upper management, you're not a full service agency. Please remember that. This brings me to the last one, which is mistake number five, and that is really not adopting the perspective of German HR, especially when you're coming from abroad. As you know, we share this experience of ours having worked as tech recruiters on a regular basis. And from my personal point of view, 
with that HR professional experience, I would say what applicants are lacking most is a fundamental understanding of how to adopt that perspective of the recruiter, of the person on the other side of the table. Uh, I can tell you it's not just you or people from abroad in general. I've really seen Germans struggle with that as much, so don't worry about it. Really, Germans are just as bad uh, when it comes to that. Don't worry, I'm already saying this in my video training where I'm also going a little deeper on what that exactly means. Um, but especially if you're from abroad, you have to go the extra mile. It really matters much more that you're providing a familiarity and security feeling to a German recruiter. You know? A German that is applying to a German company will get that benefit, will get that bonus right away simply because of where they're from. And you have to you know, really work harder to make it up to that same level of creating that familiarity and security. And that's what I mean by that. And that's why it's so important. Again, you can watch our video training to see what exactly I mean by that. And also to understand how we work in general with our personal coaching program. If you like, and if you're interested to join, you can then book your get to know call with us, which means you send your CV and on the day and time that you uh, agreed and booked, Paul will call you and we can then take things further. I surely hope that this was a very good lesson for you today, especially on what to do differently next time on how you want to maybe adapt your CV today. You can really do these things yourself, okay? It's within your power. In any case, if you like this channel, also feel free to follow us. In any case, I'll see you soon. All the best from Berlin. This is Jörg from Find a Job in Germany. Take care.